So the next thing that you need to think about is the bylaws. Um, when you file your corporate articles of incorporation, uh, you're also going to have to have bylaws. And the bylaws are going to give certain uh, things like um, when do you, how often do, the, do you have a meeting for shareholders, how often do you report to the shareholders, um, what are the requirements for being elected to the board of directors, and that kind of stuff. So, now let's talk about S-corporations. Um, first and foremost, you need to understand that an S-corporation starts off life as a C-corporation. Nobody goes down to a state and files a corporate incorporation for an S-corporation. All S-corporations, and S stands for small business, so all S-corporations start off as a typical standard C-corporation. The big difference between a C corporation and an S corporation is taxes. An S corporation is treated like a partnership, and that means that all profits are distributed to the shareholders based upon the number of shares. So let's say you and I are shareholders in an S corporation. I have 10% of the stock, you have 5% of the stock. The company makes $100,000. I'm going to receive a K-1, which is a partner share for, a uh, for an S corporation, a K-1 statement from the corporation that's going to tell me that I earned $10,000 of profit and I have to pay taxes on that on an annual basis. You're going to receive one for $5,000. You're going to receive a K-1. Now what that means is regardless of whether the corporation distributes money to us, we're going to receive our share of the profits or losses that is generated by the corporation. That's the big difference between an S corporation and a C corporation. Now you, your liability issues are exactly the same, the formation issues, the cost, the, the regulatory red tape issues are actually a little tougher with an S corporation because you have to file all these partner K-1s that you don't have to file for a standard C corporation. So how does a corporation become an S corporation? Well, after you file to form the C corporation, you then submit an S corporation election document with the federal government, and with the IRS. And you do that within 75 days of either the point of formation, the time of formation, or the first of the year. So if you want to be a C corporation for three years in a row and then become an S corporation, you can become an S corporation for the next year by filing within 75 days of the beginning of the year or prior to the beginning of the year. So you can file any time prior to the beginning of the year and tell the government that you want to be an S corporation or you can file within 75 days of the point in time that you become, you know, that, that you want it to happen as long as it's the beginning of a tax year or 75 days from the point in time you incorporate it. File this S corporation election document, I think it's called an SS4, with the federal government and um, then you're a S corporation until you terminate the election. Now, you can terminate the S corporation election by either voluntarily terminating and filing a document that says I want to terminate at the end of a tax year, or you can terminate by um, accepting a shareholder that doesn't fit the required shareholder parameters. So an S corporation will only allow, in, in the, these are IRS rules, will only allow citizens of the United States, corporeal citizens of the United States to be shareholders. And that means only a person with real life blood flowing through their veins who is a citizen of the United States can be a shareholder in an S corporation. If you sell stock in an S corporation to somebody that's um, that to a corporation, to a foreign national, to a, um, a, a, a trust, to a partnership, or to anything that is not a living, breathing citizen of the United States, that will terminate the S corporation election at that point in time. If you do it in the middle of a the year, then you have to file a S corporation tax return for the partial point of the year and a C corporation tax return for the second part of the year, which obviously can be a, an accounting nightmare. So those are the primary considerations 
um, to know about be, being an S corporation. S corporations are just like any other C corporation. You have limited liability, continuing existence. You have the benefit of extra tax savings because they, the income passes through. Um, you have independent life transferability of ownership, and you have the exact same thing. Creditors can go after the S corporation's assets, but not after the shareholders' assets. Disadvantages. You have a limitation on the number of shareholders, 100, that you can have in an S corporation. Again, they must be U.S. citizens. Uh, you have stricter operational processes. You have to be careful about making sure that you don't get um, S corporation um, or that you don't sell stock. You also have to uh, make sure that uh, you don't accumulate much in the way of uh, uh, there's some, well, basically you can't accumulate any retained earnings. Otherwise, it's going to be, um, uh, you know, still be taxed out to the individuals. Um, those are the main benefits of in, or downside of an S corporation. Here's one big benefit of an S corporation. If you